So what we're going to talk about today is the four basic tween methods that you can use in Adobe Animate. There are actually four basic tween methods that you can use. And these four basic tween methods essentially are the foundation for any kind of animation that you would want to do in Adobe Animate with the exception of frame by frame animating. Frame by frame animating is just kind of a whole other kettle of fish. So we're going to talk about four basic ways that you can use Adobe Animate to tween objects for you. So first, I'm going to start with a new project. And this is exactly what you guys are going to do, by the way. So we start with a new project. Second, I'm going to change my settings, 30 frames per second, 1920 whoops, by 1080. Now I've got a high definition um, stage. <coughs> Once I have that all set up, now I'm going to start making some shapes that I'm going to add tweens for. I'm going to make each shape on a separate layer. And the reason for this is some of you were playing with the classic tween yesterday. Whenever you do a tween and animate, that tween works on the entire layer. So if you have multiple shapes on a single layer, they all do the same thing that that tween tells them to do. So if you want objects to do different things, they have to be on different layers. It's actually a really simple concept, and I think you all got it by now already. So first, I'm going to start with a, with a square here, make a nice green rectangle. <coughs> then I'll make a new layer. Actually, I'm going to name it green square. Okay. Now I'm going to lock it so I don't accident. Locking on flash is really, really important. I'm going to lock it. And now let's make a circle. And I'll do, uh, how about a blue circle? Just like that. Double click. Blue circle. Now you can make whatever shapes you want for this assignment. Um, but I'm just doing this the way I want to. So then I'll have another rectangle. And let's make it red. And I'll do, let's do an oblong like red rectangle here like that. And then lastly, we're going to do another, we'll do an oval, and I'll make that one, uh, yeah, how about turquoise, there we go, a turquoise oval, just like that, okay. Guys, please stop, pay attention. Okay, so now I'm going to make a 90 second an or 90 frame animation, not a 90 second animation, 90 frame animation, and I'm going to set up all four of these all at once. So it's actually really, really easy. Click, hold the uh, left mouse button down, and drag, and you get all four highlighted. Right click, insert frame. And it's actually really important that you do that, that all four of them have the same number of frames, because if you don't, let me remove some frames here just to show you. Um, what will happen is you can have objects wink in and out of existence, okay? which is really powerful, actually, once you start becoming an animator uh, that's got more complex things going on. You can have objects start invisible, like basically not even there, and then show up. Or you can have things do their thing and then disappear. So it's really important for this animation that they are all the same. So just make sure they all have you insert frames at 90 uh, frames right there. Uh, and now we're ready to go. <clears> the <throat> other thing that I think is really important is, again, you want to make sure that when you are working with this, you can lock the others so that you are working only on the one object that you want. It's really easy to mess up and work on a different uh, object. So we're going to start with our green square. And we're just going to make a simple classic tween. So just like we, we were looking at before, right click. I'm going to insert a new keyframe. Okay. Nothing happens because those two keyframes are the same. But now I'm going to take my green square and I'm going to move it. Now, I'm going to make a mistake here and show you something that's actually really important also to understand about shapes in Flash. If I just click on this green square and move it, I've left something behind. What have I left behind? The stroke. I've left the stroke of the object behind. Flash does something kind of weird that took me a long time to get used to. 
And that is the stroke and the fill of the object are actually considered kind of sort of separate things that you can click on and change. So in order to highlight the entire object, you have to remember in Flash, or actually, oh, I said Flash, Adobe Animate, you have to highlight the entire object like this. So you click off the object, hold the left mouse button down, and you draw a box around this, the object and you go. Don't do this, because Flash will also allow you to tear out chunks of an object, which is really interesting. And again, actually really powerful later on. But for now, with you starting, it actually is really frustrating. So I'm going to take this, make sure that my time is set to the last keyframe, and I'm going to move my rectangle down to this bottom corner. <clears throat> it jumps because I don't have a tween. So right now, the first 89 frames are keyframe number one, and then 90th, the 90th frame is keyframe number two. Right click just in the middle here and create yourself a classic tween. And then what you can do that kind of helps you, you know it's a green square, that's easy. So I'm going to go back, I'm going to retype in a different name on my layer, and I'm just going to call it Classic Tween, so I know which one it is. Plain and simple. And you'll actually get used to it, they have separate colors. Each tween has its own color. Okay, so let's lock that. Now we're going to unlock the blue circle. Going to click here, and in this case, we're going to do, actually let's skip the blue circle, and let's work on our red rectangle. <clears throat> and you'll find out why in a second. So this one, we're going to use a shape tween. Um, and you don't have to, again, follow the same uh, order that I'm doing, but this is just an exercise to help this. The shape tween is really cool, but the object is going to stay in place. It's just going to change its shape, literally. So again, I'm going to go to the end of the animation. I'm going to right click, and I'm going to insert a keyframe. Once I have that second keyframe, I use the white arrow tool, which is my sub-selection tool. Just like in Adobe Illustrator or Photoshop, I can click on an object, and these are vector-based objects, just like in Illustrator. So I can now grab a point, and I can move it. Whoops, don't want to move the whole object, though. That can make some mistakes. So I can then go and just kind of create a, a, a different look, like that. Okay. Now, again, it jumps, so I'm going to right-click in the middle, and I'm going to create a shape tween this time. <clears throat> nice and simple. <clears throat> and you can see it doing its job. Now I'm going to lock that layer. <clears throat> Excuse me. So now I'm going to work on my blue circle. So I'm going to unlock that, and this time, this is the first time we're actually not going to go to the end and create a keyframe. This last tween that we have here, well not last tween, but second to last tween, is the motion tween. The motion tween is the most powerful tween in Adobe Animate. Um, and in order to create it, you do not need to have a keyframe at the end yet. Um, and it creates keyframes for you. So all you need to do is right click here and say create motion tween. Try this again, create motion tween. I guess you have to select it, there we go. Create motion tween, yay, there we go. Okay, so you have to select the object. That's the difference between animate and flash. I'm used to flash. You just right click on the tween and it would do its thing. You actually have to select the object. Okay, so now it's gonna throw an error for you. Here it says, the selected item, item cannot be tweened. You must convert this to a symbol in order to tween. Um, <clears throat> we'll talk more about what symbols are in a different demo, but uh, they're very powerful. Symbols are really cool. You can kind of think of them like lunchboxes or containers. And symbols can contain a ton of cool stuff. They can contain programming. They can contain other animations, as we're going to see in a second. Uh, they can contain multiple objects. They can contain all sorts of cool stuff. So we're going to click OK. And then what's going to happen is over here in the library, you're going to see your symbol, and here's your blue, blue circle, okay? And you could rename it if you wanted to. For now, we're not going to bother with that. But in more complicated animations, when you have like hundreds of symbols, you want to name them. So now, we've got a tween. You can see if I click off of here, you can see that the timeline is now this nice like sky blue color here. So now, in order to create motion with the motion tween, I go to the end of the timeline, or wherever I want to create a new keyframe, 
I grab my object and I just drag it. And what's cool is, notice it created a new keyframe for me. And now my object moves. But that's not all this thing can do. The motion tween now all of a sudden has a path. You can see this line kind of showed up. If I click off of it, the line disappears. This is the path that the object is actually going to follow. I can take the black arrow tool and I can bend that path to make nice smooth curves. See? Or even better than that, I can create points on the inside of the path like this by dragging it. So now, at this point in time, I moved it. Now you can see how it's kind of doing this. But what's even cooler, let me bring this up a little bit here, is that this is a Bezier curve, just like an Illustrator. So I can now grab the white arrow tool, I can click on the path, and I get handles that I can start to drag around. I can even go into the pen tool, and I can use the convert anchor point tool, and I can make sharp corners by breaking the handles away from each other, just like you guys are used to in Illustrator. So this allows me to make like a bouncing ball or something along those lines. It's really powerful. It's really cool. Okay? Now, last tween. And this is a little bit of a misnomer because there are only, if you notice, when you right click, there's only three tweens that you can do. Right? You can only do three tweens. The last one is a nested tween. So before I go any further, what I need to do is rename, I forgot to rename my, all my uh, layers. So we'll call that motion tween. And then this one is a shape tween. And you'll see how each one of them, ha each tween has a separate color too, so you can identify them very easily. So the last one, we're going to name the nested tween. And this is a huge concept, and this runs most of modern animation, okay, at least in animate. You're going to have an object. You're going to select that object. Make sure you've locked everything else. Right click, create a motion tween. It's going to create a symbol. Then you're going to go move it. So I'm just going to have it go like this. And I'll take my black arrow tool and kind of curve it a little bit. Just to have fun. Something simple. OK. Now, take the black arrow tool, which is your direct selection tool, okay, or just selection tool. Let's zoom in a little bit here. <clears throat> Double click. Now, what's interesting is all of a sudden you are now inside the symbol. Remember, I said they're like containers, it's like a lunchbox. So you've opened up the lunchbox, and now you notice you've got your, sim or your shape, the original shape that you created is here. Also, notice look at my timelines, now empty, and I have a whole new set of layers. So symbols can contain whole sets of layers and also contain their own animation timeline. Yes. So now, we're going to do a shape tween inside the symbol that will run simultaneously at the same time that the motion tween runs in the scene. So this time, I'm going to right click, and I'm going to insert frame. And now I've got a 45 frame long animation. I didn't do 90 frames for a reason. We'll get there in a second. So now I'm going to insert a keyframe. And I'm going to go use the, uh, the sub-selection tool, the white arrow tool. And I'm going to click on a point or two. And I'm going to alter the shape of my object. You don't want to add new points. You can only kind of alter the points that you've got. I mean, you can try adding points, but it usually breaks the object pretty badly. And you'll see that it just jumps, because I don't have a tween yet. So I'm going to right click, and I'm going to create a shape tween. And you can see how it's morphing its shape again. Go out into the scene. Okay. Scrub through the animation. You don't see it, do you? However, if you go to the Control Test Scene here, or hit Control and Enter to test it, now it will apply the internal animation that's inside the symbol while it's also doing the motion tween that's on the symbol itself. Now, if you look, what is it doing? It's resetting. There's another word for that. You're correct. It's looping. It loops the animation. So here's concept number two out of this idea of nested tweens. Concept number one is you can have animations and whole subsets of layers and everything inside a symbol. 
a symbol is essentially a whole new program, a whole new animation in, its, in itself. <coughs> Concept number two is that that animation, if the time is different than the outside animation, so if the animation on the inside of the symbol is a different number of frames than the animation on the outside of the symbol, it will continue playing the animation on the inside of the symbol over and over and over again in looping. Now, I chose 45 frames, which is exactly half of 90 frames, right? If, however, I went inside the symbol and I extended that to an odd number, let's say like 65, and go back and test my animation, now you'll notice every time it loops, it starts in a different place because it remembers as it's looping where it ended and where it began. So it's really important when you're doing symbols and you're doing animations inside symbols to be very careful how you sequence them and how you synchronize them with the animation that's on the outside of the symbol. So let's go back inside our symbol here. We're going to take this keyframe. We're going to set it back to 45. I'm going to then right click and say insert frame at 90. Then I'm going to right click on the first keyframe and I'm going to copy it. Then I'm going to click on 90 and I'm going to paste that frame. Now it's back to normal, see? Jumping again, so I add my, my shape tween. Nice and simple. Go back out, let's test it. <clears throat> and now the shape slowly returns back to normal, you see? So there's a lot of cool things that you can do. This is just the basics. This is exactly what I want you to do as an exercise. You're going to make four layers. One of the layers is going to have a classic tween. One of the layers is going to have a shape tween. One of the layers is going to have a motion tween. And then the fourth layer is going to have a motion tween. But inside the motion tween, you'll have a shape tween. Okay? There's a four basic tween in Adobe Animate. And you're just going to do a simple assignment like this. It's going to be graded on a you did it or you didn't do it out of 40 points, 10 points. Per, shape or per layer. Please name all the layers. That's only really important for the nested tween and the motion tween because I want to know which one you were trying to do the nested tween on. The others have, the, have different colors, so it's easy for me to, find, to figure that out. But I want to know which one you were trying to do your nested tween on. Um, but that's what I want you to name each layer and also do this as a, an HD. So always, as always, I should say, change your settings to a 1080p signal at 30 frames per second. Does this make sense to everybody? Yes. All right, let's get to work.